The Bahamas is kind of a, a twist on the typical Seacology model. So here what we're looking to do is one-time modest price interventions that can make a significant difference in preserving the environment. And that's exactly what Seacology has done uh, here in San Salvador with the Iguana Nursing Center. It's to me always humbling to see the dedication and commitment of people and organizations working together um, for things that are not only important to them but also have an impact globally. The Iguana Conservation Center is a partnership between San Salvador Living Jewels, Loma Linda University and the Jerez Research Center where the Iguana Conservation Center is housed and it was funded by Seacology and CIBC First Caribbean Bank. Iguanas are among the largest lizards and uh, throughout the New World where they occur, as well as the Pacific Ocean and the Fijis, they're all pretty much endangered. They're in a lot of trouble, particularly those on islands. This particular iguana is endangered, like many of the others, because of cats, dogs, rats. It destroys the young and the eggs, and of course the dogs and cats can even kill the adult animals. While there used to be iguanas across San Salvador, right now they are no longer on the mainland. They've been pushed just to the outer keys. Most of them are pretty much on, on, on Green Key. These little islands they occur, there just isn't a lot of food for them. They are susceptible to um, other kinds of um, uh, uh, natural disasters from hurricanes and so forth. They're vulnerable to storms, they're vulnerable to introduced moths. The larvae are destroying the cactus that they uh, really rely on. This is a more of a controlled environment uh, situation where we can bring the iguanas in from the islands. That's how we got years and years of research on these animals. <laughs> nice and red. If anybody wants to hold this, one yeah. can just touch it. Oh, yeah. We will be breeding them. We will be keeping them young until they're one to two years old, which makes them too big for rats to kill, for instance. And then we'll be re-releasing them. In some remote areas where they haven't been in a long time. And we want to uh, quickly double or triple the population. So we're going to target other areas that lizards used to be and try to control the feral animals and so forth to increase the population. So this is perfect, I think, in, in, in terms of um, um, boosting the iguana population. One of the exciting things about this project here is that we're working with the Living Jewels Foundation here in San Salvador, and they hope to leverage this project to get the government to make an area along the coast uh, and offshore with smaller islands and national park, and that would really be fantastic. Well, if the, the proposal goes through where, the, where Green Key in particular would be protected on the, the north side of the island, that houses the largest population of the iguanas. Uh, on San Salvador, and so that would be, be a big start right there. In that same area, we'd be protecting a number of the uh, shorebirds and, and other things nesting there, and there's talk of getting Pigeon Creek protected as well. And the significance about Pigeon Creek is it's the major nursery ground for, uh, for all the fish on the island, and so the mangroves there provide the habitat where, where the young are being raised and grow up uh, before they head out to the regular dive sites and, and fishing sites. Right now, there are no national parks or protected areas on San Salvador. One of the reasons that Seacology and CIBC First Caribbean Bank were so excited to support this project is because we are hoping it will just be the start of further conservation efforts on San Salvador. Now we have something that people can, can get behind, see that there is a, an endangered animal and we're protecting it right here. And what's the greater significance with protecting their community and their environment for them? And I'm extremely thankful to Ecology and CIBC, First Caribbean, for supporting this financially and allowing us to do this. This has been a long-term dream, certainly a dream of Bill's, and uh, it's finally come to fruition. Ecology and CIBC, First Caribbean Bank, are doing one part, but it's the people here who actually put their efforts and their heart into bringing to fruition what they have set out.